Our days of getting relatively inexpensive bandwidth are just about over. We are revisiting the concept of in-memory computing and near-memory computing to eliminate some data movement on the memory bus and improve the performance and energy efficiency of bandwidth-intensive workloads in these computing platforms. Hi, my name is David Wong. I'm a director of memory product planning for Samsung Semiconductor. Today, I would like to talk to you about in-memory processing and near-memory processing, topics of advanced research at Samsung. In-memory processing, or more colloquially, processing in memory, as well as near-memory processing, are architectural candidates that we are investigating as tools that may be used to alleviate performance constraints in modern computing platforms. In today's talk, I'll spend some time to explain the background and rationale for processing in memory and processing near memory. Then I'll explain the architecture and implementation for Samsung's first processing in memory device, PIN for short, based out on a modified HBM2 device. And I'll discuss the potential benefits and targets of the HBM PIN device. Then we'll spend a few minutes to look at the initial results that have been obtained from coupling the HBM2 PIM device to a commercially shipping Xilinx FPGA. Thereafter, we'll shift our focus to AXDIM, Samsung's platform for researching the near memory computing concept on a memory module. And for that topic, I've invited Dr. Sean Lee, who's an area research lead at Facebook AI Research from Boston, to come and give us a summary of his goals and experiences working with AXDIM. Then finally, I'll conclude this talk by explaining the potential directions where PIM technology or AXDIM technology could be applied. Firstly, to understand why we need to look at processing in memory, we need to examine the von Neumann bottleneck that constrained the performance of modern computing platforms. Nearly all modern computing systems utilize the classical von Neumann architecture. The von Neumann architecture is a computing architecture based on a 1945 description by John von Neumann and others. The term von Neumann architecture has evolved to mean any stored program computer in which the computing element or elements are distinct and separate from the stored instruction and data in memory. And the instruction and data must be moved from memory into the computing elements for processing. Now, data movement between the compute and memory over the shared memory bus often limits the performance of the system and is known as the von Neumann bottleneck. In the past 70 plus years, our collective response to the von Neumann bottleneck has been to continuously create wider and faster memory buses so that data can be more quickly moved between the compute and memory. However, our days of getting relatively inexpensive bandwidth to alleviate the performance bottleneck imposed by the von Neumann architecture are just about over. Today, memory bus interfaces are increasingly limited by the cost of the interconnect between the compute and memory. That cost comes in the form of the number of PCB wires and cost and quality of the PCB technology, the number of balls on the CPU, and the cost of the CPU package, as well as thermal constraints that collectively limit the available bandwidth between the compute elements and the memory system. So in this world where the bandwidth constraints of the memory interfaces are limiting system performance, and that bandwidth scaling itself is being challenged, we are revisiting the concept of in-memory computing and near-memory computing to eliminate some data movement on the memory bus and improve the performance and energy efficiency of bandwidth-intensive workloads in these computing platforms. We'll now take a deeper look at the processing and memory concept in the following slides. On the topic of processing and memory, Samsung has implemented the first research and demonstration vehicle for PIM based on Samsung's HBM2 device, codenamed Aquabolt. HBM2 Aquabolt is a currently shipping product that is being used in leading-edge AI and HPC systems. The HBM PIM device, based on Samsung's HBM2 Aquabolt device, is called Aquabolt XL. Samsung's view of PIM as designed and architected in Aquabolt XL is that it's targeted to complement high-performance CPUs and GPUs by implementing FP32, FP16, and INT16 computing resources within the memory die. In this way, some bandwidth-intensive streaming data computational tasks that repeatedly move data between memory and the compute elements can be moved into the HBM PIM device, and the data movement and computation can occur entirely within the Aquable XL HBM PIM device. Aquable XL implements the PIM functionality by incorporating programmable computing unit, a 
abbreviated as PCU within the DRAM die. Finally, we believe that by removing data movement from the shared memory bus, PIM can successfully mitigate the performance bottleneck imposed by the von Neumann architecture. We expect that by removing the von Neumann bottleneck, we can see performance gains by as much as 4x and energy efficiency gains as much as 50%. Samsung has been collaborating with Xilinx on high-performance solutions for data center, networking, and real-time signal processing applications, beginning with the Vertex UltraScale plus Samsung's high-bandwidth memory product family. Xilinx's recent introduction of its Versal HPM series product gives us a perfect platform in the long term to co-explore the concept of HPM processing and memory with Xilinx. We are pleased to collaborate with Xilinx to evaluate Samsung's Aquable XL HPM pin device for potential performance and energy efficiency gains in AI applications. By using PIM technology, Xilinx adaptive computing acceleration platforms would, could have another option to place compute where it can attain the best performance and best performance per watt. Xilinx adaptive compute acceleration platforms already have the option of placing a given computational task on a scalar core or an optimized AI core within the compute resources on the FPGA. With the addition of PIM into the integrated HPM device, the adaptive compute acceleration platform now has an additional option to place a memory bandwidth intensive computational task inside the HPM device. If it improves performance or reduces the system level energy consumption or both, initial results from our evaluation process of Samsung's Aquable XL HPM PIM device on Xilinx's existing ultra-scale platforms are encouraging. Results show that in some AI-focused microbenchmarks that we were able to improve performance by 2.5x to 2.8x, and at the same time reduce system level energy consumption by 2.3x. More details about our performance evaluation benchmarks used and test methodology can be found in our uh, presentation at Hot Ships 2021. These promising results have given us hope on the viability of the PIN research, and we are continuing our exploration of the architecture, and we are investigating the potential commercial deployment of the PIM technology. In the previous section, we just discussed the in-memory processing capability of the HPM-based Aquable XL device. Aquable XL enables high-performance in-memory processing in a custom-designed memory device. However, HPM as a memory is not suitable for all systems, and for server class systems that deploy DDR4 or DDR5 memory on commodity memory modules, a different concept is needed. For these systems, Samsung is exploring the topic of near memory processing on AXDIM. For AXDIM, the basic concept of moving data off the shared memory bus and onto compute resources next to the memory resources is maintained. However, instead of building new memory devices with integrated compute resources, AXDIM puts the compute resources on a data buffer and couples this data buffer to commodity DDR4 or DDR5 DRAM devices on the memory module. In this way, data movement between the memory module and the host CPU is reduced and converted to on-module data movement. And the von Neumann bottleneck is similarly alleviated as in the case of processing and memory. AXDIM has similar benefits as PIM in using the on-DIM parallelism to improve performance and energy efficiency on the memory system. AXDIM has similar benefits as PIM in using the on-DIM parallelism to improve performance and energy efficiency of the memory system. To explain possible benefits of near-memory computing like AXDIM, I've invited Dr. Sean Lee, Facebook AI research lead based out of Boston, to give us his perspective. Over to you, Dr. Lee. Hi. I'm Sean Lee from Facebook AI Research. Today, I would like to talk to you about our experiences in exploring the concept of near memory compute with AX team. Facebook is interested in creating personalized recommendation systems to better serve the needs and interests of our users. These systems leverage deep learning models and account for the majority of data center AI cycles. However, a major part of the performance is limited by two factors. One is memory-bound sparse embedding operations with irregular memory access patterns. And the second one is memory bandwidth saturation. After large exploitation of model, operator, and data level parallelism, these unique memory characteristics present new challenges to accelerate recommendation inference services. 
In 2019, we proposed a lightweight commodity DRAM compliant near memory processing solution called RecNMP to accelerate recommendation inferences. RecNMP is specifically tailored to alleviate off chip memory bottlenecks and offload embedding processing to the DRAM theme, which contains a buffer chip enhanced with compute capability. To assess the effectiveness of our RecNMP architecture, we collaborated with Samsung to realize our architecture concepts in AX theme based on an off the shelf FPGA. From the results of two sparse neural net based recommendation models, we could achieve up to 1.5x throughput improvement on end to end inference serving with the two AX theme channels over a CPU only implementation. Moreover, due to the reduced number of trips between the DRAM and the CPU, we also observed more than 30% energy savings on the interconnects. These initial results of AX Team are very encouraging, and we look forward to working with Samsung on the next steps in evaluating the near memory compute concept. Now back to you, David. Thank you, Dr. Lee. In this short talk, we cover the rationale for in-memory processing and near-memory processing and initial e evaluation results for both of these efforts. Now, I'd like to conclude this talk by describing our general philosophy and general research path for in-memory processing and near-memory processing. Our general philosophy can be summarized by two words, evolutionary and accommodating. Evolutionary, we're trying to proliferate in-memory processing or near-memory processing as architectural tools that can be alleviate the binomial bottleneck and augment existing CPU, GPU, TPU, and FPGA systems, not to displace them wholesale. We're trying to provide addendum or additions to existing product specifications, not to create new product specifications. Accommodating. We understand that a one-size-fits-all approach will not work and we would like to work with interested customers and partners to explore possible paths for in-memory and near-memory computing, aiming to adapt and deploy different types of data acceleration for different types of memory as needed for each market. In this manner, PIM can be extended in a compatible manner into devices such as LPDDR5 or GDDR memory and applied to accelerate specific memory bandwidth intensive tasks important to the markets where these memories are deployed. That is all. Hope that I've managed to provide some interesting perspectives for you on the topic of Samsung's exploration in in-memory and near-memory processing. For more information and details on Samsung's PIM and AXM research efforts, you can find our presentation at ISCA and Hotchips 2021. Thank you.